is the mother of all mothers he is the many breasted one so he understands what it is to be a mother i want to celebrate all mothers today mothers aunties sisters great grandmothers grandmothers every woman out there i celebrate you i salute you and i wish you a happy mother's day the lord will bless you in the name of jesus you may please be seated praise the lord Again, I want to, I'm so, I, for some reason, there's so much joy in my heart. Um, this is another opportunity to celebrate women, and we celebrate you. We celebrate you as a woman. You know, Harriet Beecher Stowe, an, an American abolitionist, said, women are the real architects of society. And if you didn't believe in yourself before, I want to challenge you to change that perspective as a woman. Because as a, as a woman, as mothers, as, as aunties, we are the architect of society. And if you ask yourself, how so? We birth, we, we nurture, we raise. Some women are raising the next president of the United of States of America as we speak. Somebody is raising the next, the next president of America. Praise the Lord. The next Obama is being raised by a woman. The next Trump is being raised by a woman. And so again, I salute women. I salute women. The title of my sermon is Looking Up During a Lockdown. Looking Up During a Lockdown. Father, speak to us this morning and let your word penetrate our hearts. Let it bring change in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Looking up during a lockdown. And our text for this morning is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 18. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 8. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And I'm just going to be sharing what the Lord laid in my heart this morning. The Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but after what he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. May the Lord bless his word. Jesus was speaking this parable unto disciples. And look at what he says in verse 1. The Bible says, look at what the Bible says. It says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So I assume he's speaking to men and saying, men, you need to pray consistently. And then in verse 2, he goes on to give the example of a, a, a judge in a city who had no fear whatsoever for God. And then in verse 3, he talks about a widow. Now when he's speaking to men and saying men ought always to pray, it amazes me that the Lord chooses to give a woman as an example. He could have given the example of a man, but he said, learn from the woman because the woman can be persistent. And it is in the place of persistence that we get results. And so he said there was a widow in that city. Now, the fact that she's a widow speaks volumes. She was helpless. She had gone from two incomes to one income or maybe zero income. Because if she was not working as a wife, when her husband died, she would have no income. So she went from two incomes to one income or maybe to zero income. 
Does that sound like a lockdown situation? When, when some spouse, spouses have lost their job, sometimes it's both, both of them that have lost their job. So this, this woman was helpless. She did not have income. Her children were at home. She was overwhelmed. She was troubled. Where do I turn? And I'm thinking she comes from a culture where when a man dies, when a spouse dies and is male, the members of his family come in and they take everything that belonged to him. I remember a man when I was very young, um, when he was sick in the hospital, members of the family were already thinking of who would take the TV, who would take the sofa, who would take the love seat, not thinking of the woman or how she would survive. And so this woman found herself in a situation where she did not have any help. Nothing was coming in. And then her, her, her neighbors, her in-laws were oppressing her. And she looked to the right. There was no help. She looked to the left. There was no help. She looked forward. There was no help. She looked backward. No one to help her. And that was when she decided to call upon somebody who is higher than her. If her neighbors could not help her, if her friends could not help her, she probably had been deserted by her friends who still had husbands. And were saying, we don't want her to snatch her husbands, so let's stay away from her. She looked all around. And then she decided that there's only one more thing to do, to look up. And I remember the Lord telling me a long time ago that the only look you cannot block is the upward look. David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. He's thinking maybe the help will come from the hills. But suddenly, all of a sudden, he realized that my help comes from the Lord. The Lord is the only helper that is true and sure in any situation that we find ourselves in. And so it was important for Jesus to share this story because he was trying to teach some principles. The first principle here that I see is that the voice of a mother is powerful. There is power in a mother's voice. This woman looked at her children and she said, my children will not suffer, but I have no help. Let me go to one that is higher than I. Take me to the rock that is higher than I. I, I I'm, I'm imagining that that was her song. Take me to the rock that is higher than I. And so she ran to the king. And the king, for some time, did not listen to her. But eventually, with the power of persuasion and the power of persistence, she was able to change the mind of the king. And now listen to what the master says. In verse 7, he said, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. The problem we have is that we are not crying to God day and night. What most of us are doing, especially in this time, is we're complaining, we're grumbling. We're saying, oh my God, these kids need to go back to school. Oh my God, this is too much. I am overwhelmed myself. It is a lot that we have to deal with. But you know what? God is waiting on you and I as mothers to cry unto him day and night so that our situations can change. The first principle Jesus was trying to teach is that the power of a mother's voice cannot be over overlooked. It doesn't matter what circumstances your children are in. It doesn't matter what they are going through. As a mother, you can pray them through that situation and take them to the other side. This woman was able to effect change for her children in the place of persistence. Praise the Lord. The second principle he was trying to teach is that men ought always to pray and be tenacious. Don't give up. Don't say, I've prayed, I've prayed, I, I'm not seeing the results. You know, blind Bartimaeus did not change his story. When he heard that Jesus Christ was passing by, he said, Son of David, have mercy upon me. People told him to keep quiet. He said, no, I will not keep quiet. I will not change my story. I will continue to cry until he hears me. And eventually, the Lord heard him. 
He was persistent. He didn't give up. Because it is in the place of persistence that we can obtain victory. The third principle he was trying to teach is that even in a lockdown situation, you can still look up. Last week, as uh, the servant of God ministered, he shared with us that we, are, we may be locked down, we may be in a lockdown situation, but we are not locked out of fellowship with God. And the key to fellowshipping with God is looking up, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus Christ is trying to help us to understand that God is waiting. The Bible says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in, in truth. God, for he seeketh such to worship him. God is looking for worshippers. God is looking for people who will come to him. Matthew 7, 7, the Bible says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. The problem is we're not asking. And even when we ask, we are asking our means to consume upon our loss. But God is looking for women who will stand in the gap. We have this example of this woman in the Bible who refused to take no for an answer. We had a women's Zoom party yesterday. And our guest speaker shared with us the story of a lady in, in Georgia who went from being homeless, from being on the street, to a place where she just, she just cried out to God. She didn't believe in God. She was just crying. What do I do? What do I do? And the, the, the Lord spoke to her clearly get an education she went from being homeless to getting an education to getting her doctorate now she's a pastor she started by not knowing god but god met her at the point of her need and it changed her story when we look up god will meet us at the point of our needs and he will change our stories in the name of jesus there's so much going on around us now that can cause us to be discouraged but if you remember that the only look that cannot be blocked is the upward look, you will not be discouraged. Because this is not the time to be discouraged. This is not the time to fear. This is not the time to wallow in self-pity. This is the time to arise and be strong and do exploits. Because the Bible says they that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. A lot of times we're not doing exploits because we are not being strong. And we're not being strong because we're not looking up. We're looking up, we're looking around at the circumstances that face us. But God is saying to us this morning, hope in God. This is a time to hope in God. This woman had hope that if she went to the power that was higher than her, she would have a resolution to her problem. That the king would be able to help her. It is the same with our father. And that's why Jesus Christ ended the parable by saying, Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be long with them? Jesus himself is encouraging us to not be afraid. Psalms 42 verse 11. Psalms 42 verse 11 says, Why are thou cast down on my soul? I've had the privilege to speak to a number of people in this season that we have been, and a lot of souls are cast down. David found himself in a situation where he was cast down. And he said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. This will end in praise. Amen? This will end in praise, but we have a part to play in it ending in praise. This woman's story may not have ended in praise if she had not looked up. I don't know what circumstance you are going through. I don't know what situation you are facing. I don't know what challenges you are facing. But I want to assure you that as you look up, starting today, God himself will step in and he will change your story. In Luke chapter 5, I believe, Jesus Christ said, he stepped into a boat and he said, let us go over to the other side. And then the storm came. The fact that the storm comes does not mean that Jesus is not in the boat. Jesus is still in our boats in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the lockdown. We're not locked out of fellowship with God. 
But the most beautiful part is we can still look up. To him who is able to save to the uttermost. And God will step into our situation in the name of Jesus. I want to, I want to share with you five, five things that we can do as we look up this morning. Number one, understand that the situation needs to change. I don't know what the situation is, but it needs to change. Number two, arise from the state of despair. Stop wallowing in self-pity. Enough of wallowing in self-pity. Self it's time to arise and say, Lord, you are my king. You are the higher power that I can go to. I lift up my eyes unto you, Lord. Help me. It is time to arise and come out from the state of despair. Number three, lift up your voice in prayer. You know, the hardest thing for many Christians to do is to pray. We can do anything else. We can sing, we can worship, we can everything else. But when it comes to prayer, it is hard. And the reason it is hard is the enemy does not want you to break through in the place of prayer. The enemy knows that prayer changes things. The enemy knows that when you take time to look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and you connect with him, change will come. And he wants to keep you bound. He wants to hold you in that same spot where you have been for years and years and years. But this morning, the shackles will be broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus himself will break the yoke of prayerlessness in all of our lives in the name of Jesus. Let us arise and pray. Lift up your voice in prayer. The Bible talks about David. He prayed three times a day. He worshipped seven times. We cannot even pray half, a, half, a, half of one time. When Jesus Christ went into Gethsemane and he took his disciples with him, he said, can you not watch with me for an hour? By the time we've prayed 15 minutes, it seems like it's an hour because we have not been in constant fellowship, in constant prayer prior to that time. First Thessalonians 5.17 says pray, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing pray, means pray without ceasing. In other words, being constant communion, fellowship with the Lord through the Holy Spirit. When we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We are having trouble praying because we are not walking in the Spirit. The Spirit of God has not taken us over completely. And so it's difficult to be in communion with Him. So let us learn to lift our voices in prayer. Number four, be consistent in the place of prayer. Be consistent with what you are asking. You are asking for change. Stand on that same thing you are asking for until the Lord shows up and brings about the change you are seeking his face for. Our God is not a man that you should. I said you should ask and he will give you. But ask in faith. James chapter 1 verses 6 to 7. James 1, 6 to 7. Can we pull that up real quick? But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. When you stand in the place of consistency, in faith, the answer will come. Have faith that it is done. Do not waver. Do not say, ah. Okay, I prayed, but it, nothing has changed. It may not change now, but he will come through. Because Jesus said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. And then he follows it up with, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. In other words, when you are asking him, and it shows up, is he going to show, is he going to find that you still have faith? Or are you going to be wavering? I say, well, I don't know if the Lord will do it. I don't know if the Lord will do it. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe your faith is weak. You can build up your faith. Because the Bible says faith, Romans, Romans uh, 10, I believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Spend quality time in the word. To build your faith. So when you go ask, you ask in faith. Nothing wavering. 
You don't want to be like a wind, like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed to and fro. You don't want to be a roller coaster Christian, going up and down, believing today, not believing tomorrow, crying today and having faith tomorrow. No, we must stand consistent and strong in faith. Somebody sent me something the other day. I was I was a little, you know, down, and she said, "You, he's your daddy," by by Priscilla Shira. It encouraged me. Because when you know that God is your daddy, you can ask him for anything. A daddy is more intimate than father. Anybody can be a father. But when you talk about daddy, there is that bond. There is that closeness. And when you know that God is your daddy, you can approach him in faith. And so whilst we're celebrating Mother's Day, I want to challenge you as a woman, as a mother, to step up your faith. Take it to the next level. And let's see what God will do in the name of Jesus. The higher king in our case as Christians is God himself. God is ready to bring about change in our lives. We may be on lockdown. Our kids may be home. Our husbands may be home. I was talking to my, my, one of my uh, sisters in, in England yesterday and she was telling me how... In the UK, the, the, the level of abuse has increased. Children dishonoring their parents because now everybody is home. The pressure is too much for everybody. The kids are slapping their parents and hitting their parents because everyone is under pressure. But you see, this is where we as the architects of society can stand and say no in the place of prayer. The Lord will help us. The Lord will strengthen us. We will not be weak in the place of prayer. We will be strong and we will do exploits. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We have heard your word. Your wish, your desire is that things will change for us. But Father, we need, oh God, the grace to step into the place of where we can bring about that change, which is the place of prayer. We need the grace to be able to look up instead of looking around. Lord, this is the month of grace. We pray that you will release your grace unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. As we go forth today to celebrate our mothers, we pray that heaven will celebrate us in the name of Jesus. Heaven will count us worthy to be celebrated because of the change that we have brought in the lives of those that matter to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, happy Mother's Day. May you all be celebrated in the name of Jesus. Amen.